Right, so this is where we're housing uh, our Sumatran short tail python. It's just a very basic newspaper cardboard box for a hide. I get a lot of these boxes and as you can see she squashed it flat. So I've just got a water bowl, do odd misting in here and they're doing very very well. Um, we haven't been disturbing her for a while because she is going to be laying and we checked earlier there she is and what is she doing? Oh, we can see in here. We can see some eggs there at the back. She's just starting to drop her eggs. So it's a bit messy in here, but that's fine. Normally when the girls are coming to lay, they're spotting a little bit of poop here and there. That shouldn't be a problem. But you can see we've got a couple there and there's some underneath her as well. So she's just started, there was two, I think there's probably four or more now. So we'll probably come back in the morning and uh, get all those eggs. So she's on a thermostat, so they're not, nothing bad's going to happen. It's controlling the temperature just right. We might just um, give a little bit of a misting to get the humidity right. Shame, she's even got poop on her face and everything. So once she's finished laying, we'll clean up in here and get the smell of her eggs off. Alright, so we've just got to prep everything now, um, incubator-wise and the container that's going to house these eggs so you've got everything ready and right with the temps so she's really really full she should have dropped quite a nice size clutch we'll see tomorrow morning okay so here we've got um, very coarse vermiculite I normally like to use a perlite vermiculite mix but what we're going to do because we're not putting eggs in it straight away is I often like to just uh, boil the kettle and use boiling hot water. You can see it actually cooks it and it swells. So if there's any sort of bacteria or anything that's on here, normally this stuff is pretty sterile anyway, but this is obviously going to kill anything that could potentially be harmful, start mold and mildew and things like that. Now, healthy eggs can actually fight off mold and mildew and things like that quite well on its own. So what I normally do is I'll pour in here um, especially when it's pythons, they like it quite humid, the eggs, and then I'll see if there's any water, like you can see sitting in the corner there. I'll just move that water around, see what is absorbed, and then I'll drain off all the rest, whatever's not being held. And then that normally works 100%. I've done that every time, and a lot of the time we get a 100% success rate, unless something obviously goes wrong with an odd egg. Okay, so then we're just going to get this into the incubator. Obviously by tomorrow morning it's going to be the exact temperature that we want in the incubator, which is about 31.5 degrees, around 32 degrees Celsius is good for most of your pythons. Okay, so this is a fridge carcass that we've turned into an incubator. You can see I've just got a dimmer stat up here. This is just a storeroom. And this incubator here is only um, for the breeding of those black bloods, or better known as Sumatran short tail pythons. So if we have a look inside here quickly, you can see at the back there we've got a laminated heat pad. Okay, and then in the front, lower down, we've also got one here. And then you can see this little computer fan. It's on very slowly, so it's a 12 volt fan, but we just connect it to a, a 6 volt little converter, and that's just to change the airflow. So with it sitting, it needs a little adjustment over these buckies, it just gives a very gentle flow of air, moving it through this incubator, and then I've got all these bottles of water, so that they all get nice and warm to that 32 degrees or 31.5. And then if there is any load shedding, which we're having a lot of lately here in South Africa, I can't keep the lights on. So sometimes it's going off twice a day for two hours at a time, um, sometimes even three. So six hours a day with no power, so we have these alternatives. But normally healthy eggs will make it all right. So these bottles are just here to maintain the temperature nicely. Oh, so that's just a quick look at the uh, little makeshift incubator we've got for incubating these eggs. Uh, the temperature is still slowly climbing, obviously with opening the door it's losing it now. And luckily it is summertime, so we don't experience um, too much in the drop of temperature because it is pretty warm here. 
All right, so it's the next day, and as you can see, the temperature is spot on. 31.5 as I set it. Very, very accurate, these dimmer stats. So they gently increase or decrease the power rather than turning on and off, which makes it an extremely accurate unit. So we're just gonna open up here quickly. I need to get the egg box out. All right, I'm just gonna see what we're getting here. 31.2, these things can be a little bit out as well. Okay, so we're gonna grab that. Now, I did uh, kind of rush the video a little bit in the beginning, so I do apologize for that if it's a bit rough and everything. But uh, yeah, I was kind of last minute, didn't expect the eggs to come so soon. I just wanna see what we're looking at here. Okay. All right, so we're gonna close this up. Let's go get those eggs in there. Awesome. So here we are with, uh, with mom. Looks like she's all finished. She's nicely tight around her eggs and that's normally a sign that they have uh, finished everything. It looks like she's got a monster load here. So we're gonna see how it goes. Um, you can see a couple of eggs lying out on the side. Now if this was out in the wild, those eggs were all gonna die because she's not able to keep them warm unless she kind of scrape them together. Normally the eggs stick together so that they don't roll away and things like this. But this looks like a massive clutch for the size female. So the eggs are actually really small. Um, your blood python eggs, they're normally around about so big. They look sometimes pretty close to retic eggs. So depending on how many eggs an animal can have, you know sometimes the eggs are very large, they're not gonna have so many. If they have very small eggs, then they can have a lot. So in this situation here, it looks like we've got small eggs, we're gonna have a lot. Smaller babies, but I mean, they all grow up to being healthy adults. Um, and funny thing is like uh, one of my rock monitors, she drops duds every year, which are about the same size. And um, normally I've had clutches of like 30 eggs, which is a lot, but I've got a rock monitor that drops up to 60 eggs unfortunately all infertile she's not the best mom don't know what it is tried different males and everything um, just not getting that right um, so it just shows how much numbers they can actually have now a lot of the time we're taking eggs away from a, a female they can be a little bit uh, protective and nippy and everything nice thing about Sumatran short tail pythons is that they just don't bite Hey, do you want to protect those eggs? Are you going to bite me? No. Okay, so she's just shying away. To be honest, I have never been bitten by a black blood besides a feeding response. When they want to eat something, you've got to be very careful. But otherwise, they just do not bite. So it's funny that these are not more, uh, more popular um, than the blood pythons and the, the Malaysian short tails and the Borneos and things like that because they have actually a really nice disposition. They'll huff and puff and do their thing and twitch and leave me alone. I've even helped them by shed when they're shedding and had to grab them behind the neck and then let them go. They don't do anything ever. So that's a really nice thing about them. Um, funnily enough, they're not so popular as I say. Well, you're in uh, South Africa, everybody wants, 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 but then uh, no one actually buys them. I sit with I still got one baby from a previous season okay so this is quite nice and damp we're gonna just start by popping these ones in and I see that yo, this is gonna be quite a full egg container all right so the ones that are stuck together luckily these are not stuck too hectically but we can actually just pop that one like that keeps the same position ah. oh lots and lots of nice eggs thank you very much mommy but I'm sure, you know, a lot of the time when things don't sell very well it's because people don't know the species and things like that. A lot of people maybe think these are quite bitey snakes. I mean, if this was any other python, it should be biting me by now. Okay, obviously snakes don't really like um, being touched on the head. Some are better than others and they become comfortable with it. Okay, but because the head's a much vulnerable part of a snake, but I'm just showing you 
how tolerant this animal is. I mean, she should be trying to kill me because I'm going to steal her eggs right now. Yeah, she's very tolerant animals. See, she's actually got a little bit of skin stuck on her face. She, she didn't like that. We'll get that later. Once we get her off of her eggs and everything. Okay, come on girl. We just, oh, she's holding on tight. Trying to protect them eggs. Okay, and obviously a snake has got a backbone. So we've got to be careful how we take them off. And we don't want her to squish all her eggs. Okay, this one just fell off. You see, there's the marking of the newspaper. All right. It's okay, girl. They're going to stand a better chance with me. You can see she's actually made quite a bit of a mess with all her spot poops. Yeah, she really doesn't want to let them go. Okay. So we want to just carefully work her off of that. As I say, they have got a backbone. We don't want to bend her the wrong way. That can really hurt her. All right. Okay, girl. Okay, stole. No signs of trying to nip me or anything. And then also what we're going to do once we've uh, finished in here, obviously we need to clean. That's an obvious. I didn't want to move her because I knew she was close to laying. So obviously being so full, she's just a little spot, 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 which is not the end of the world. So we're going to clean up here and then hopefully the smell of the eggs will be gone. We'll give her a little wash as well. Because if she can smell the eggs in the area or still on her, she will not eat. She'll not put her weight back on. So she looks a little bit skinny now. One of the heaviest bodied snakes in the world for its length. They get pretty big. No, you see, that's where your eggs are going, but you can't climb in there. Okay, and we're taking her eggs away because they're going to stand a much better chance if we artificially incubate them than if we leave her alone with them. And she's also, in time, not going to eat at all until those babies hatch and move off and things like that. So that's why we just take the, the eggs away. All right. So as you can see, really amazing clutch of eggs. 100% fertile, all of them. Obviously your fertile eggs look nice and plump and white like big marshmallows. Nice leathery, leathery eggs. Okay, whereas your duds are going to be misshapen and funny colors. Okay, so I think to them just resting on top of that vermiculite will do just fine. I just don't want to leave any eggs like some that are underneath. They can suffocate. So I might just go through this, have a little adjustment. See what we've got here. It's probably about 22 eggs there. Very, very good clutch for such a small girl. My other female is much bigger, but I just decided um, I'm not going to breed her. She's my absolute baby, and you can lose animals when breeding as well. I would uh, cry like a baby if I had to lose her. So I just decided to skip her and breed just the one female. That's plenty babies. I'm probably going to struggle a bit to sell them anyway. So we'll see how it goes, and hopefully everything hatches nicely. Really, really cool snakes. Hey, mommy, you, you want to bite me yet? No? No? You're just huffing and puffing. I mean, you don't get more tolerant than that. Okay, my other female, exactly the same story. All the babies, exactly the same story. Super chilled. Took a little while to get some of them eating, but they are absolute monsters now. Like destroying food and growing nicely, so. That's cool. I had a couple customers get back to me who bought and they're like, said the babies are doing fantastically well. All right, cool. So then just to pop these in the incubator and then we wait. Yeah, so it's 66 days later and as you can see our eggs are starting to hatch. These few have cut open. So what we're going to be doing is opening up the other eggs, which we always pretty much do just to make sure we don't lose any babies. Okay, so you can see some of them dumpled in quite a lot. Um, I think we lost about five or so for some odd reason. It could be deformity or something funny happened to the little embryo. It was quite early on. Uh, we didn't really lose them later on. So let's see. 
what we got here we can have a little sneak peek inside the eggs wow cool check at that this little one's gonna come and take his first breath there's his little tongue flick very very cool hello little guy welcome to the world okay these eggs are pretty tough and we've had problems with some other snakes recently where they actually started drowning in the egg and a ball python clutch where the one baby drowned inside perfectly formed baby and everything but because they couldn't get out they will drown eventually Right. So we're not expecting anything funny, these are all normal to normal. Uh, we'll just get some, uh, these will all mostly be dark black heads and chrome heads because we bred a black to black. I do have a pumpkin head female but uh, decided not to breed her this year. Yeah, you know, this one's like really curious to come out. Okay. It's a nice messy job. It looks like we've got lots of good looking babies so far. The scalpel is extremely sharp, so I'll go nice and carefully. And these little guys not showing their faces yet. But at least they got a nice window to come off, out of. Okay. So you can see there's quite a lot of blood, but that's all normal. The babies will slice it through these veins anyway. These are all the veins that are getting oxygen to the babies through the egg and eventually the egg is not able to breathe properly and that's what forces them to hatch so in babies hatch it's actually quite a stressful time because they're running out of air in a panic and that's when they slice open a lot of the times uh, when chickens actually hatch out of the egg they go into a fit and that's how they actually hatch starvation of oxygen so it's quite a rough way to come into the world but I guess birth is quite a hectic experience okay this is not birth it's hatching but same thing in the end really okay there's one you can see quite a lot of the veins All right, so we got lots and lots of little windows to make here. Ugh, some are a little more discolored than others, but still good veins. I've seen even some come up with like really brown, horrible sludge mess. The babies are fine. I've even seen some guys' videos where they get like red, green stuff coming out. It looks really gross. But again, babies are healthy. Alright, a little window for you, dude. Okay. A couple more still to go and then these guys will just be waiting in their egg absorbing the last bit of yolk before they will leave. So the ones that have slit they might come out tomorrow or the next day. We'll see how it goes. Oh hey hello that's awesome. That one he was kind of ready he's like what's going on? Okay, so this one, this one looks like it'll be quite a nice chrome head. Whereas this one's quite dark. It'll probably go more black with age. Uh, 
Ugh. Anyone for scrambled eggs? Okay, so that one's got a nice little window. This one's still really, really plump. But they'll all be ready at the same time, so close enough. There we go. Yeah, so this season I didn't look at pairing too many things, but uh, we did have a pretty good season. But a lot of space issues, so there's certain snakes I just don't want to breed as we can't have space for them and it would be irresponsible of me to breed them. Yo, this one you can see I didn't even cut through the membrane yet. And there's little Bubba underneath that membrane. Pretty crazy. Uh, this one's got quite a lot of yolk next to it as you can see. So this one's quite, quite plump. But I mean this one, he might take three, four days eventually till he comes out. And if the blood vessels and that die, and the yolk and everything starts going muff, then at least it all stops feeding to his body and he'll drop that last piece. So it should be just fine. We'll leave him like that. Keep it nice and moist maybe. At least he can get through the bag very easily. <clears throat> There we go, another bubba. Hello little dude, first tongue flick. Very cool. Okay, so there's just one more egg to go. Oh, this one, did you, you see, actually started slicing, like he wants out. Yo, yeah, that's cool. Hey little dude, you're gonna come out some more. Yeah, that's awesome. There we go. Yeah, that's so cool to see these little guys popping out. Breeding snakes is very rewarding but it also can be extremely stressful at times and we can also lose a lot of babies or even adults for that matter, things do happen. Alright, so all our eggs are cut, it's just a matter of giving them some time and they can all come out. Alright, so we're just having a look through the clutch a bit more and we did find that we've got some deformities. So I'm just going to show you this to you guys as well because this kind of stuff does happen. This one here is literally biting itself. And he's got a few kinks. So unfortunately this little guy is going to have to be put out and he's a lot smaller because he hasn't absorbed all his yolk. And that might be due to all the deformities and things. But yeah, shame, this little guy is definitely not going to make it. And then we have this one here which has got a kink in its neck and it's doing a 180 which I have never seen before. So this little guy we're going to have to sort out as well, unfortunately. And then this one here He's got a, I don't know where he's hiding now. But this one has got quite a big bobble eye. There his head is. It looks like those um, kind of goldfish you get with that massive eyeball. Well, eyeballs, this one's only got one. Ugh, I thought he was trying to nip me there. Okay, so this might be due to like the tear duct that's not draining out because the eyes drain out to the mouth just like ours do 
so that's why it might actually be filling up with fluid so I don't that might not come right I don't know you might lose the eye and then you can just be someone's pet snake but if he's got any other deformities besides that then he might be paying a visit to a king cobra once we've euthanized him if safely all right so these ones all look good they expect exploring a little bit out the egg, not very shy. The nice thing about these bloods, the black bloods or Sumatran short tails, is that they don't bite, they're not nippy. So last time I had them, it took quite a while to get them actually eating nicely. Hopefully this batch will be a little bit better. So that might also be to their shy nature because you can't even sort of tease feed them, they just don't bite. So once they're eating and everything, they make awesome pet snakes because they're not so nippy. You don't want a big, big python that's quite bitey. But even the the Malaysian black pythons, Malaysian short-tailed pythons, they calm down very well as well. All right, so that's cool. We'll see once they come out of the eggs what we've got. Okay, so we're here with my little, my big girl Sammy. This is the Sumatran short tail, but this is the pumpkin head form. And uh, she's just having a bit of a bad shed. So this is one of the times we actually need to give these snakes a hand. But the nice thing is that, as I say, these snakes are super chilled. I've never actually had one try and bite me. I've even ha have, sometimes have to take the skin off of their face and everything. So we've just had her in the water for just a little bit and her skin's already coming off a little bit better. So she had a little bit of a dry shed, but it's quite common for these snakes to have bad sheds, because I mean, look how thin the neck is compared to the girth of that body. So she's quite a massive snake. I haven't actually weighed her in a while, but these snakes can get up to about 20 kilos. So a really, really cool snake. One of my favorite pythons I own. Uh, she really has a special place in my heart. I mean, I love all the reptiles, but yeah, this girl is very, very special to me. I imp imported her from the States many years ago. She's probably around 11, 12 years now. So, and she destroys her food. Big piglets, big rabbits. And a lot of the time I don't even need to feed her that much because a lot of the time you can overfeed these snakes and they get extremely fat, obese, unhealthy you can have things like organ failure and stuff so every now and again I'll give her a good break as well and sometimes just give her like three jumbo rats rather than big rabbits or piglets and things I see she's also busy going to the bathroom now um, but yeah if you're thinking about getting yourself a short tail python, this is one of the things you may have to do with them. Nice and easy with the Sumatrans, because as I say, they don't bite. Not known to be quite nippy or anything. But if you have to do this with an animal that is extremely defensive and doesn't trust you or anything, you can have a very, very difficult time. And then it's not such a pleasurable snake to keep. We're just going to get her back end out. She is uh, getting close to shedding now. I just got her on this tub's actually working quite nicely because I can at least get my hands around to where it's. I can get the skin. She has shed most of her belly because obviously that's in contact with the ground, getting all the fi friction. But what a tolerant snake. I mean, I'll, tr I'll trust this snake around anyone, even little kids and stuff. Never once has she gone for me, besides if she gets excited in a feeding response. Okay, I think that's most of it. I think she is wanting to go to the bathroom. I'm just trying to get the skin from around her cloaca there. Okay, now she's on the move. She's making heavy breathing noises, sounds like hissing, but obviously that's just because she's a big python. But you can just see how heavy the back end is. She really needs to go to the bathroom. So rather she does it out here than 
inside. So I think there's a little bit of skin on her face. And she's very good about this kind of thing. A lot of snakes will bite you, try and do stuff like this. But once, once they're used to people, you realize you're not something that's gonna try and harm and kill them, they don't bite. Extremely tolerant animals. Okay, so she's looking all nice and clean. It's such a stunning snake. A lot of people love the blood pythons that are very dark, solid black. I actually love that she's got some patterns. It's really, really cool. Okay, so we're just gonna maybe give her a little more exercise until she lets rip and then she can go back in her cage. All right, so it's 48 hours later and uh, see that we've got just a few of the little babies out. Ah, can you believe? I say they don't strike, although his mouth wasn't open. Are you gonna bite? Let's see if we irritate him a little bit if he actually bites, because I've never had one actually bite me. It was just a muck with a closed mouth. But it's still interesting, I haven't even had a baby or anything do that to me. Uh, you know, he's like, ah, the game's up now. He knows I can't hurt him, so he's not gonna bother. Okay, so here we go, beautiful little baby. You can see there's like some, oh, lack of slimy stuff on them. Oh, little umbilical piece, he also just fell off. You can see where this little belly button was. So that just rubbed straight off, that's nice and healed. So we're gonna pop this little guy in some, in this tub of water over here. Nice and gently, he might freak out a little bit. Oh, just going underwater, blowing some bubbles. No swimming lessons needed. And they can just have a little soak to get rid of that skin. <laughs> All right, very cool. Okay, so that one's going to be a chrome head. And then this one's the dark headed one. You can see his little button left. You're also right, eh? Oh, tongue tip sticking out, that's when you know, there we go. Okay, so they are surprising me a little bit, but I don't think they're going to be that bad. We didn't have this last time, so maybe these ones will also be better feeders. Because it's not, not really for the Sumatrans to be so nippy and bitey. But again, they only go for it once, I haven't moved off and they're not trying it again. That's quite interesting. We'll see how they develop. I mean, each animal's got its own personality, so I'm sure there are some people who've got Sumatran and short tailed which are a little nippy or something. Okay, so most of them are still in the egg. Ooh, blowing little bubbles. Got their own little jacuzzi hot tubs going on here. So, but I think these guys are ready to come out. What we can do is just gently have a look-see. And there's no yolk, no umbilical. Yeah, they're just shy. They're just shy. Come on out, little dude. Come check out the world. Oh, there we go. Whoa, jeez, like that slimy. Come here. Okay, so we'll see if these guys get a little nippier as they, once they settle a, a few days. I can tell you, you guys are lucky it's not, uh, there's no smell of vision because this stuff stinks. Smells like um, quite a bit of urate or like ammonia smell with all this egg that's starting to go off. But as you can see, this baby doesn't want to come out. There's no yolk at all. It's not even like a little button on this guy. So that's perfect. Gee whiz, there's nothing as slimy as this, I tell you. Come on, little guy, don't struggle. There we go. Okay, so they're all swimming very well, got their heads above water. We obviously don't want any drowning or anything like that. Oh, that's so cool. But he's a bit messy, he would make quite a nice photo, but we've got some cool photos of these guys. Come on, little dude. Here we go. Welcome to the world. Whoa. Oh my word. Okay, so this one's obviously not liking that at all. 
but still not trying to bite. Okay. Oh, it's just getting more and more messy. All right, let's see if we can tickle him out. Come on, come on. Oh, this one's got some nice light pattern. As I say, I like, I quite like the pattern. A lot of other people not too keen on the patterned ones. They like them really, really dark. But these will obviously get darker as they get older as well. Okay, let's try and put all the empties on one side. Oh, this guy's turned himself upside down somehow. Okay. Hello, where are you? Whoa, hello. Come on. Yeah, I see they're all ready to come out now. Tickle, tickle, tickle. Oh, this one's got quite a dark body. Black was nice and black. Hello! <laughs> oh, that's so cool. There we go. Oh, my word. Okay, so the other ones seem to be all chilled like I would think, but the first two were a little bit defensive with like, hey, leave me alone. And then nothing after that. Oops, sorry, dude. I'm just gonna tap you on the schnut there. Come on. Whoa, there we go. Make a run for it. Just wanna get away. Just wanna get away. Oh, but are oh, these babies all perfect? Not a single kink or anything. Hope I don't jinx myself now. So it's just those three little deformed ones the others are all looking perfect so that at least makes me feel good about this batch come on oh this one's super light eh oh, look at this this one's head when it comes out come on I'm like no jeez I thought that was a tail and it pulled such a fast maneuver it's like what you got a head as a tail so there we go nice very light head yeah that should be a brute beauty of a chrome head I hope this one's got a little bit of a button hey that's not your egg <laughs> I'm not ready for the world don't worry buddy none of us are all right there we go oh lovely okay so those are all empty gee this is quite a bit of housing we're going to have to make for these little dudes. Okay, let's just go slowly with some of this one. Okay, not no belly. Oh, hey now. That's not a nice way to come into the world, hey little dude. You're alright. Oh, they're all perfect, nice fat babies. Oh, it's, oh, it's getting hectic now. <laughs> Very slimy stuff. Hello, here we go. Alright little guys, we want the first experience not to be all that bad. Yeah, he's also got a little bit of an umbilical, but that's not a problem. We keep the paper slightly moist and then they can you know that'll just slowly dry up and fall off. Alright, <clears throat> the last one. Okay. You can have a nice, nice slow interaction. Come, little duty. Yo. Yeah. It's grandpa. <laughs> oh, shit. It. Yes, like. Oh. oh, great. Fantastic. Now I'm covered in stinking egg juice for the rest of the day. But I didn't want that little guy to fall on the floor. All right, there we go. That looks so cool. I know all you little guys are trying to get out, but you're all very good swimmers. So we're just gonna let them get the slime off and then we're gonna pop them in their homes. Very, very cool. I'm quite happy with this batch.